What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about in the Atlantic. We have Hurricane Lee that is going to be turning pretty soon and bearing down on New England and Nova Scotia. We have Hurricane Margo now that is organizing in the subtropical Atlantic as we speak. And we have Invest 98L, which was soon to become, which will soon become Nigel, as it is currently developing off the coast of Africa over here. We're going to go ahead and cover all of it today, because all of these pose some sort of threat, whether it's to land, whether it's to shipping interests, and whether it's a threat down to the road. So we're going to go ahead and start with Hurricane Lee right here, since this is the biggest threat to land. Here's the situation we have right here: maximum sustained winds are now 115 miles per hour. It's moving west northwest at three at six miles per hour. Pressure's 951 millibars. Tropical storm force winds extend out now 205 miles from the center, and hurricane force winds extend out 90 miles from the center. And the NHC even puts this as this. Some slow weakening is forecast during the next 48 hours, but Lee is expected to remain a large and powerful hurricane. That's what we have going on. We're going to go ahead and show you the discussion that we have going on. And yeah, it looks like, yeah, GO-16 satellite and radar images from NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft indicate that Lee is trying to, uh, Lee is trying to consolidate into one large eye wall, but the eye remains obscured with fragments of the old eye wall structure. So it looks like it was undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle at some point peak 700 millibar flight level winds are about 110 knots uh, estimates sfmrs are at 90 knots so the initial wind speed is held at 100 so here's the situation it is no longer expected to strengthen it is forecast to weaken starting uh starting to at first it's going to stagnate for the next 24 hours hold at this intensity and then it's going to start slowly weakening as it starts to push further and further to the north into that cold wake and then it gets down to a category one hurricane and then by 120 hours out as it is approaching land it is expected to become extra or post tropical so here's the cone we have right here there is now a tropical storm watch in effect for bermuda so now we're getting updates every three hours which thank thankfully we're doing that look how large the wind field is right here and if you take a look at the cone parts of the u.s are not are in it now including the extreme uh, part of massachusetts extreme eastern part of massachusetts excuse me and parts of maine as well as new Brunswick, as well as new nova scotia and all this area right here so that's the situation we have with Hurricane Lee at this time. We'll keep you updated. Here is the key messages right here. A uh, one dangerous surf and life uh, life threatening rip currents. Two, there is an increasing risk of strong winds, uh, uh, strong winds, rainfall, and high surf impacts in Bermuda later this week. A tropical storm watch has been issued. Three, it remains too certain to know what additional impacts may Lee may have for the northeastern United States coast and Atlantic Canada later this week into this weekend. However, since the wind and rainfall hazards will extend well away from the center as Lee grows in size, users should continue to monitor Lee of uh, Lee's forecast during the next several days. So that's what we have going on for Hurricane Lee as it is approaching the United States and Atlantic Canada. Next thing we're going to go ahead and briefly talk about is Hurricane Margo. As that now this has been a pretty interesting situation. Here's what we have. Maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. It is moving due north at 12 miles per hour and the minimum central pressure is 975 millibars. Tropical storm force winds are at, it's actually a pretty large uh, wind field with this tropical storm force winds extend out 255 miles from the center and hurricane force winds only extend out 35 miles from the center that's to be expected in a category one hurricane at this current time here's the discussion that we have right here it is forecast to strengthen slightly up to a high end category one hurricane with winds of 90 miles per hour before it starts moving through cooler waters and slowly but surely weakening as we move through the days. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the cone. As you can see, it has a massive wind field once again. It is expected to continue to move north, maybe west-northwest, potentially impacting some shipping interests west of the Azores Islands before weakening down to a tropical storm as it moves into cooler and cooler waters. But this right here is a potential threat right here as, we're, as we've been looking at more and more models and we're lo and this is get, get, going to get pretty pr uh, interesting. Excuse me for stuttering right there. So here's the situation. This is Invest 98L as well as merging with Invest 97L. A broad of area of low pressure over the eastern tropical Atlantic continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms. 
This system is expected to consolidate with a low on the western side becoming a dominant over the next day or two. Gradual development of this low is expected after that, and a tropical storm is likely to form by this weekend while the system system moves west-northwestward or northwestward at about 15 miles per hour across the tropical Atlantic. Chances of formation in the next 48 hours, 20%. Chances of formation in the next seven days, 80%. So yes, 98L now has an 80% chance of development, and this looks like it could potentially be a serious situation down the road. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs of all these systems kind and show you what, what's in play for all of them. Here's the European model. The, for Lee, this thing continues to jog more to the west and then starts to make that turn and approaches land while Margo is continuing to strengthen and meander in the Atlantic right here. However, the European is now forecasting this, uh, forecasting a high pressure system to kind of start building up briefly, and that should be enough to push this to land. This is now, according to the European, forecasted to make landfall near New Hampshire uh, and Maine right here while bringing lots of impacts to Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, as well as Atlantic Canada over here before becoming a post-tropical cyclone. As for 98L, which will become Nigel, it is forecast to strengthen into a hurricane, maybe move a little bit more to the west towards Bermuda, and then according to the European, it keeps it out to sea. We'll have to wait and see if that happens or not. Next one we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS GFS has been pretty interesting for sure. GFS has Lee moving towards Atlantic Canada, a little bit more to the east than the European, near the U.S.-Canadian border, but still bringing lots of impacts to parts of Massachusetts and Maine, and then into Nova Scotia, potentially, uh, potentially Halifax as well, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. Margo's out here just uh, just kind of doing its thing. And then we have Lee starting to organize and develop. Moves, th uh, moves through. The GFS is actually forecasting a high-pressure system to develop further to the south than what the European was suggesting as this thing continues to organize and rapidly potentially intensify at this rate. And then the GFS continues to have this thing moving closer and closer to the United States. Although the GFS has this thing turning more uh, to like the s southwest right here, which... Unless the, uh, there's a massive high-pressure system that builds up, I don't think that's going to be the case, and I don't think it's going to be meandering out like that before impacting land. Mo we're best uh, The... Most reasonable case at this point is that this thing's going to approach North Carolina based off of this setup, if not uh, moved more to the north and stay out to sea until the mid-Atlantic, If uh, based off the setup the GFS is bringing up. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the CMC model to kind of uh, compare and contrast. CMC has, the, uh, has this thing moving th uh, towards Nova Scotia, towards Halifax, making an impact in Atlantic Canada and maybe Maine as well, while keeping, Lee, while keeping Margo and Nigel kind of out to sea, although it's similar to the GFS. It has the Bermuda High starting to build up a little bit, but it's not as sustained as it is with the GFS, and it is forecast to stay out to sea. It's really going to depend on how strong that Bermuda High is about seven days out, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. Next one we're showing you is the Navgem. Navgem with Lee has this thing moving towards Atlantic Canada, similar to the CMC, not bringing too many impacts to the U.S., while keeping this tropical system out here, which is uh, which is Nigel, further to the south due to a, a high-pressure system building up, as well as the fact that this is a weaker storm, and stronger storms tend to get pushed further to the north due to Coriolis effect. So that's what we have with the Navgem. Last one we're showing you is the Icon. Here is the Icon right here. Icon is this thing organizing, developing, starting to strengthen with this while Lee is bearing down on Atlantic Canada. So the majority of the models are calling for this thing to c currently impact Atlantic Canada while bringing impacts to parts of Maine, which a lot of Maine is not really built for hurricanes, so that's going to be concerning nevertheless. While Nigel is forecast, according to this, to maybe move a little bit more to the west, but mainly stay out to sea unless this high-pressure system builds up considerably. So that's our situation we have going on. On that flank, next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the conditions for all of these systems. This is the global sea temperatures as of right now. Very, very warm waters across the Atlantic Basin, across the main development region, across all these lines right here. Where Lee is, it's still in a very, very uh, warm area of water right here. However, it is forecast to start turning into that cold wake. Where Margo is, it's in an area of around 26 degrees Celsius, but not very much wind shear to really battle this out. And where Nigel's, uh, the future Nigel is forecast to go, it's supposed to be moved through the main development region through all those warm waters and uh, through all that OHC that we're show looking at. 
where Lee is right now, it's in an area of around 100 ocean heat content, where Nigel's forecast to go, at least for now, there's not very much OHC for it to work with. But then as time continues to go on, the OHC continues to increase more and more and more as this thing pushes further and further and further and further to the west. So that's what we have going on. This thing could potentially strengthen at a very fast pace out here in the main development region, similar to that of what Lee did just a few days ago. And Margo is over in an OHC area for around 25 to maybe 40 OHC, and it's quite impressive uh, looking at it and how it was able to strengthen into a hurricane. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what we have pulled up right here, which is the wind shear. Lee is still battling that wind shear. It's likely going to stay with it into all the way until it gets to a, either Maine or Atlantic Canada. Margo, there's not too much shear fighting for, uh, against, uh, really against it. A lot of this is mainly outflow over here, which is pretty crazy. And as for the future Nigel over here, well, right now it's an area of pretty good conditions for organization and development. If this wind shear right here, and as if this thing continues to push further to the north and the outflow from Lee starts to tamper off a bit, then Nigel's probably going to have a pretty big shot of uh, potentially strengthening up into a major hurricane some uh, way down the road. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some a couple of hurricane models that we have pulled up for Lee as this is the main threat to land right now. Lee is continue uh, having this the HAFSB has having Lee fluctuate in intensity as it starts turning more and more to the north and expanding in size. However, as it approaches closer and closer to the United States, a lot of heavy winds start to impact at least this portion of Massachusetts and maybe Rhode Island. As time continues to go on, it's forecasting this to strengthen, uh, become a tropical storm by at the time it approaches uh, Mass by the time it approaches Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and then makes landfalls around a 50 mile per hour tropical storm or post tropical cyclone in Maine, according to the Halfs B. Halfs A has Lee uh, doing something similar to that, fluctuating in intensity before turning to the north and then starting to bear down on the United States, potentially bringing some very strong winds to uh, to Massachusetts before making landfall near the U.S. Canadian border on the Canada side while bringing lots and lots of impacts to the uh, to the um, to Maine rather excuse me now we'll go ahead and show you the Hmon right here similar situation fluctuations in intensity as we continue to speak and then it's starting to approach the United States it makes landfall near Halifax in Nova Scotia over here and then it kind of drifts out to sea and dissipates as we speak according to the Hmon so the models are pretty split between either a main landfall or Nova Scotia landfall but well either way it's still going to be a very powerful system so this is what we have for the H wharf continuing to fluctuate in intensity as it approaches the U.S. and Atlantic Canada. And by the time it approaches there, it's going to bring pretty bad impacts to parts of Nova Scotia and parts of Maine as it makes landfall and then dissipates right after that. So this is a very, very serious situation we have to continue to monitor on all fronts. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out and helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.